It's been a while. What can I say? I haven't been at it like I should be. But I am back today, giving you guys another little uh, look behind the scenes of how I do one of my jersey swaps. This one, I'm going to be doing a little bit of a theoretical jersey swap of Paul George headed to Cleveland. This is a rumor that's been picking up this offseason. Um, especially after the Cavs got beat by the Warriors. Everyone's trying to figure out what they can do and who they can add to compete for a title next year. So a lot of the rumors have involved Paul George. Some other ones have included Jimmy Butler, who's also pictured in this photo here. And as you'll see, I'm just kind of doing my typical technique of jersey swapping. But in this tutorial, I'm going to show a little bit more of um, color correction, photo retouching, a little bit of that kind of thing, as well as some little tips that you can use when things like the content aware tool or the bandage tool don't quite work the way you want them to. So as you can see for this one, um, I'm doing a lot of the same techniques that I used in the Carmelo Anthony to Boston uh, swap that I did maybe a month or so ago. For this one, I want to get the jersey completely clean because they're all based off the same template in the NBA, the Adidas Rev 30 template, which unfortunately for like all of these jersey swaps, like next year, uh, NBA will be changing over to Nike as their official outfitter so don't expect uniforms to look like this exactly next season but this is the best we can do now with what we have available um, you can expect to see jersey ads on uniforms next year the Cavaliers are going to be having a Goodyear tire logo on their uniform you should see like a Nike emblem on the opposite side where the NBA logo used to be on the shoulders if you guys are remember that from a couple seasons ago but as far as this one goes, I just want to get them to the uniforms that they currently wear or wore for this past season, and those are the home whites. Uh, so for this one, I've gone in and I've started to use mostly the content aware tool and the uh, bandage tool to get rid of some of the bigger chunks of his uniform and, and piece together what we have here. For some of those problem areas, I know uh, that certain portions of the uniform sometimes give you trouble when you try to content and wear them away uniform numbers or something like that it'll try to fill it in with a, a different texture that you shouldn't be there and for that I start just using the oldest technique in the book which is just eyedropper tool and paint I'm taking out some of the piping on the um, side of the uniform here these are just thin areas that can be content aware away by filling in uh, the portions of the uniform with what the what Photoshop deems is appropriate. You'll see up in this area over here, we start to get some trouble areas where I know it's going to be difficult. So to even avoid any confusion for um, uh, Photoshop, I'm not going to content aware this one away. I'm going to just uh, con clone stamp this thing away because content aware will really start to mess it up. And as you can see in there, some of the edges, when you make selections like this, really hard edges, you fill them in and then you, you undo the selection, you end up with these hard edges where you can see they're, they're like ghost lines of where that selection was made. So when I finish those up, I either go back in and, and select uh, like content aware away a little pieces of it or, or bandage tool away the edges, or sometimes I'll take the smudge tool and, and kind of just go back and forth and rub over those areas to smooth them out. Um, it looks a little wonky when you zoom in on it too much. You can start to tell the pixels are being kind of blurred together. But for most of these, when you're putting them on social media or when, when they just go live, when these details aren't zoomed in on and once you've kind of put effects on top of them anyway, they're really hard to even notice. So that's what I'm doing here, going along the edge of this selection and just kind of rubbing it out. Uh, this is a, a tool that I don't believe I've, I've really shown in any of my previ previous videos. So. What I kind of ran into with this jersey swap that was going to be difficult was the yellow piping on the side. The thing about the side of these uniforms is they have the, that dot texture that I don't want to lose, uh, but I wasn't going to be able to get that dot texture anywhere else. If I just used the clone stamp tool to, to kind of move over the white of the uniform, we were going to end up with just a, a, a solid section of the uniform that had no uh, like holes in it, which we need. So what I'm doing here is selecting all of the white of the uniform. I'm going to go around and select everything in the uniform that's pure white, or should be pure white. Make that selection. What I do is get the black and white tool, and as you can see, I start to play with the sliders in the black and white uh, adjustment layer, and I just pull that yellow up. That, the higher I pull that yellow, the lighter it makes that yellow channel in the black and white. So for this, we want to pump that yellow up to white, and it completely takes the color away and blends it right in with the rest of the uniform seamlessly. This is really the first time I had tried to do something like that with the jersey swap, and it worked 
better than I expected it to and better than I really could have asked for it to. So that was a great little technique uh, that I needed to share with you guys. And as you can see here, uh, one of the most important things to do is make sure you get your accessories taken off for the rest of the player. You don't want blue socks. You don't want, you know, yellow piping on, on areas where there shouldn't be. Uh, and, and then once that's all completed, we start going in and taking uniform pieces off of uh, reference photos of, you know, LeBron James, any other Cavaliers player, any high res uh, like reference photos you can find on, on Google Images and just start using the warp tool and the distort tool to kind of mash them onto the uniform as best as you can. And, and then you can start to clone stamp in those, those areas that uh, the, the new piping doesn't exactly cover up. As long as I'm keeping that dot pattern mostly in line, it'll be all right. Remember that most of this jersey will be, you know, layered over with the Cavaliers word mark. So you don't have to worry about getting that dot texture perfect because a lot of it will get covered up. Uh, and you're just kind of trying to, to massage this uh, piping along as best you can, get that dot pattern uh, through the rest of the uniform, make sure all your blue piping is gone. And, and then if, if I need to here, I go around and, and push the, the neck through the bottom of the collar where uh, maybe there was an undershirt or something. Add a shadow on top where, where his beard is covering up part of the uniform and making sure that the, the old uniform isn't showing through anyway. So that, that looks alright for the, uh, the neck hole. So for the next part, I'm going to take the word mark off of the Cavaliers uniform here. Uh, make sure I just get the word mark and bring it over into our Paul George. Starting to lighten that thing up, trying to figure out exactly where I need to put this uh, word mark. I pull up a copy of the old uh, Pacers uniform just to kind of get an idea of where that piece should kind of naturally rest uh, based off of where the Pacers uniform one does and, and get it to a place I like and try to darken it up. The thing that really is going to be important with this swap is color correction because this, if you guys can't tell, this uniform or this this photo of Paul George is really like kind of dampened by this yellow hue. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that obviously it's being played in Indiana and you're getting this reflective light off of not only the uniform but the floor, the, the scoreboard that's reflecting off of the floor, the the fans, every piece of light that's that's hitting Paul George and Jimmy Butler on this floor is being reflected in their skin so you end up with a uniform that's off like off white in a yellow way or his skin is a little yellower than it needs to be or, or Paul George has you know like yellow reflections coming off of his, his skin and so for this this particular swap it's really important that we clean that area up so I'm gonna get to that later but but for now we're just gonna continue to piece together this uniform as as we normally would with piping and jersey stripes and things of that nature Something I did want to mention um, that I know might be a hot topic in the comments section is the number selection. I know that Paul George is PG-13, that's his whole thing, um, but as far as it goes, as of today, the number 13 obviously isn't available on the Cavaliers roster with Tristan Thompson in place. And I know that 24 is also taken by uh, Richard Jefferson, but I think of the two, it's, it's a lot more likely that we don't see RJ back next year than Tristan. You know, like Richard Jefferson was... Uh, prepared to retire at the end of last season after the Cavs won the title and was talked back into coming back for one more year and after not being able to secure a title this year I think it's a lot more likely to see Richard Jefferson uh, done than we are to see Tristan Thompson move with a contract like the one that Tristan Thompson just signed it, it's going to be almost impossible for the Cavaliers to, sh to get rid of him so 13 for the time being is here to stay in Cleveland so I thought why not go original 24 uh, back with Paul George and, and throw it back a little bit. So here I'm just starting to get my, my full cut out of Paul George. I want to make sure I have him isolated from the rest of the background as I always do with these swaps. Uh, I want to make sure that I have a clear cut of uh, the, the player himself and 
Although he and Jimmy Butler are kind of overlapping, they're, they're, they're touching, Jimmy Butler's defending him, they're in the post, he got his arm on him. Uh, I want to have them as separate layers, so I'm going to isolate them from each other. So that one makes the cut a little more difficult. You got to kind of navigate your way through two different players, make a few additional selections than you normally would. But other than that, it shouldn't be too difficult. It's really important to get that done. One of the first things you need to get done once you've kind of got your base layer or swap done before you start adding any effects or color corrections or things like that. George wore Kobe's. I'm sure plenty of people did, but I did not. Also, really big plus for Paul George to already be rocking the yellow uh, arm sleeve so I don't have to change the color of that because that pretty much matches our uniform as it is. I don't know if you guys caught at the beginning, but I did fill in Paul George's patchy beard. It was really frustrating for me to look at. I couldn't stand it, so I wanted this thing to look good, so I just filled it in where I needed to. You can thank me later, PG. So for here, uh, just obviously going through God, cutting this kind of hair out, worst thing in, uh, about my job. I have so many players that have this kind of hair that I have to cut out all the time. The app, just an absolute nightmare, but thankfully Jimmy Butler's kind of got his head down so we don't get too much of that texture to have to try to cut out with the pen tool. But nonetheless, that hair is ridiculous to try to cut out. So if you can avoid it, by all means avoid it. All right, great. So now I have two separate cutouts. I have one of Paul George. And I have one of Jimmy Butler. They're separate from each other. And the next thing I'm doing here is starting to go in and color correct Paul George's skin. So I go in and the first thing I do is lay down a, a layer of desaturation. Uh, so for that, basically, it's like a primer paint, for lack of a better term. If you were painting a wall before, if it were bright blue, you'd have to paint it white before you painted it red or the blue would show through. Same idea here, but first we're gonna have to desaturate the skin completely to make it full black and white. Um, so I'm gonna select his skin. So we have like a black and white skin. And what we'll have to do after that is find a sample of his skin that's true to his pure skin tone. So what I do here is I go on Google Images and find a well-lit headshot, select a mid-tone with the, uh, the eyedropper tool and set that as my overlay adjustment layer on top of this black and white layer. Now, obviously we don't want his eyes to be brown, we don't want his, his hair to be pure brown, so we start to kind of adjust those things, we mask them out, um, and do the same thing with Jimmy Butler as well. This gives us a much more true skin tone as opposed to like being affected by light that will no longer be surrounding it considering we're putting him in a new arena or the idea is that he's in a new arena where all this yellow would be present. So same thing here with Jimmy Butler. This is a great technique for any photos you find that are kind of low quality or, or taken under conditions that are perfect for like your lighting. 
So we're going in and, and just selecting all of Jimmy Butler's arm now and making sure we do the kind of the same thing, we're turning him black and white. And then the same process, we'll Google Jimmy Butler headshot or Jimmy Butler, we'll find a headshot, select the skin tone that is kind of somewhere in between a light and a dark. You don't want to get any of those shadows and you also don't want to get the highlights. So you take somewhere like a mid-tone, you make a layer on top of your black and white layer and uh, set that layer to overlay just so we kind of start adjusting that. And once we do that, we can start to play with levels, black and white, because we don't want them to look too washed out or anything, but we do want them to look as close to his true skin tone as possible. Now for the rest of this, I just, I'm going to start doing a little bit of color correction. I want to get those reds on Jimmy Butler's uniform as true to the Chicago Bulls red as possible. So. Kind of the same techniques that I used with the skin, make selections on top of those um, red areas, turn them black and white, and then paint on top of them red on like an overlay layer for most of these. Um, some of them you can paint in by hand, other ones I'm making selections with the uh, quick selection tool, kind of picking my battles where I can using the, um, the combination of both of those tools and making sure we get all those reds. And want to make sure I get some of the finer details too. Um, including the shoes, and making sure that, that everything that needs to have color to it has that same Chicago Bulls red. And now I'm just going to make sure that my background is clear of anything that indicates Pacer fans or that we're in Indiana. So. First thing I do, you know, make the selection of the players that I already have, expand it, feather it, content aware, fill it away. So now I have a blank crowd. Kind of do the same technique with the court to get that Pacer logo off of there. And once we're done with that, we're basically home free at this point, or at least the swap is done. Uh, so I can show you guys a little bit of what that looks like. This is just um, before any effects or, or anything like that are really added to it. This is what we're left with. And once we have that done, we can start to go in and add our own effects. So this is what I came up with. I, I spent a little time to try to make this something more interesting than just a typical jersey swap and, and added some effects to it that I thought made it look pretty cool. So this is something that I usually do with my swaps once I've finished because um, it makes them stand out a little more, makes them a little more interesting and, and takes it a little more than uh, photo editing. So that's all for this one, guys. I appreciate you hanging with me and watching my newest video. I plan on getting something out at the end of the week, a couple more videos uh, coming up for the rest of this month, especially with the NBA draft being here and then NBA free agency will be coming up. So with those, I'm hoping to get some more swaps out and, and some more techniques, whatever you guys want to learn about, uh, just throw down in the comments below if you have any requests for swaps. I know people have given them in the past, but I'm trying to be a little more active than I have been in the past. So. Uh, let me know what you have to think and, and what you want to learn and, and what you want to see.